In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the eigen function in MATLAB in order to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a coefficient matrix A, and also then how to use that information to calculate and plot the solution of the corresponding homogeneous system of linear equations. So to begin, we're going to be working with our fish initial value problem from the last homework assignment. And you'll recall in that example that the coefficient matrix A was given by negative 1 fifth, 1 half, 1 fifth, 1 fourth. To get an idea about what's going on with the fish population, I think the first step is to compute the eigenvalues of A. As we mentioned in class, the eigenvalues give you a lot of information about asymptotic behavior and whatnot for the system. This can be done in MATLAB with the eig command. So typing a, eig A and running the output, in this case, will result in an answer of two eigenvalues, 0 0.0922 blah 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 and negative 0 0.5 blah blah blah. You can already see something going on here in the sense that one of those two eigenvalues is positive. This means that unless you get extremely unlucky with your initial conditions, both of the fish populations will experience exponential growth, albeit at a relatively slow rate at first. To back up this observation and to compute the full solution as well as the eigenvectors, we can rerun the eig function, but store the output now into two variables which we'll call v and l. When you use this sort of format to run eig, the output v and l will display as follows. v will be a 2 by 2 matrix whose columns give the eigenvectors of A, and l will be a 2 by 2 matrix whose diagonal elements give the eigenvalues that we showed earlier. The eigenvalues in l, for example, the eigenvalue in the 1, 1 position, will correspond to the eigenvector in column 1 of v, and similarly, the eigenvalue in the 2, 2 position correspond to the eigenvector 2 of v. So in order to solve our initial value problem, we also need to solve for the constant c, which we discussed in class can be done using the linsolve command, and results in the two coefficients of c1 and c2 given in the vector c displayed below. And finally, to calculate and plot our solution y of t, which we already know is going to be c1 times the first eigenvector times e to the first eigenvalue times t, plus a similar term for the second eigenvalue and eigenvector. And we're just going to plot this over the interval 0, 10 for now. So what we're going to do is translate this equation into MATLAB code, and that's done in the second line of the script below. Here you'll note that we've replaced c1, c2 with the subscript versions here with c1 and c2 in terms of elements of this output vector c that we got in the previous calculation. Similarly, we replaced v1 and v2 with the columns 1 and column 2 of the output eigenvector matrix, and we've replaced the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 with the corresponding diagonal elements in that matrix L that we also achieved in the output of our call to eig. After doing a plot with some labels and a legend, we can see that we get a graph very similar to the one that you probably got back on the homework assignment, where the juveniles and the fish do experience this growth. In fact, if you increase the time interval to time 50, you can see this a little more clearly in the sense that now you can really see them start to take off exponentially fast and grow. And all that is because that first eigenvalue was positive. Note that both the juveniles and the adults grow, not just one or the other, even though the other eigenvalue is negative. And that's because when we're forming the solution y here, right, its two rows end up being the solutions y1 and y2, and both of those rows will have a positive exponential function in them. As a second example, we're going to look at a three population model just to demonstrate and see what happens when you have more than two variables involved. For this, we're going to use as an example the OWLS population model, which you'll have to look at MATLAB Supplement 5 for details of the setup. And I highly encourage you to spend some time making sure that you know how to get this system of equations from the information given there. The set of differential equations here has three unknowns, which we're calling J for juveniles, S for subadults, and A for adults. And so our coefficient matrix correspondingly is a 3 by 3 matrix. The initial conditions is also a 3 by 1 vector, giving the initial populations of juveniles, subadults, and adults. And notice that in this case, a call to eig shows that there are actually three eigenvalues two of which are complex conjugates, and the third of which is a positive real number. 
Notice that the complex conjugate parts actually have negative real parts, which means that these are not going to contribute much in the limit as t goes to infinity. There'll be some oscillations in the short run, but they will decay to zero as t goes to infinity. The third one, however, gives positive growth, which means that just from looking at this information, we can say that again, unless we're really unlucky with our initial conditions, that all three fish populations, or owl populations, getting my animals mixed up now, should grow as t increases and they should grow exponentially fast. To see this a little bit more clearly, we've coded the rest of the solution. We've now stored the eigenvalues and eigenvectors as the matrices v, l, respectively. We've solved for our coefficient vector c. We're looking at our solution for time 0 to 10. And notice that we have replaced the previous line where we computed y now with a for loop. And with three variables, it's not so bad to write them all out. But once you get to 5 or 6 or more, it gets so tedious that this for loop structure is, is much easier. When we look at the plot, we can see that in the short run, the growth is relatively small, especially for the sub-adult and the juvenile populations. I'm, but if we increase the time interval to, say, 50 and rerun the section, then we can observe the exponential growth a little bit more fully in all three populations. As you increase to systems with more than three variables, the eigenvalues still give you similar amounts of information. And we're going to see that next class when we look at systems of two masses connected with springs to each other into the sides of a track.